Believing in better is a mindset to pursue excellence in everything you do. It's welcoming opportunities to improve your farm and knowing that your best season is simply a starting point for this season. Precision planting is for farmers like you who believe in better. Monday, right to the bin site. It's like they're up there putting the distributor on right now. Put the drag on Saturday. I didn't have the time lapse camera on for that. Moved it from a crossroad to there. I don't know. I did have it uh, propped up with some wood off from a pallet, so it was more angled than I missed the top of the bin last week. So go there for now. Muddy. Rained an inch over the weekend. probably mentioned we got the drag there they suggested that it actually was cheaper i believe to make the leg shorter and do a drag than to make the leg taller and do a downspout and plus it's supposed to be easier on the grain not as far a drop to get all that stuff done this is what's going to be up next the hopper you go base for it then it'll go up and there's the top have rings in between of course be over ahead where we pull in at and we'll load this and then load the trucks out of it when we're hauling out. You got anything to say? No words. No words. how I feel. It's getting trucks ready. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully, maybe, uh, pick some corn this week. You know, we just been, uh, sitting and waiting all year. And it's, just needs to dry up a little bit, but. Getting Garrett's truck ready. I uh, just checking brakes and stuff like that. None of the trucks really need service, but it's kind of a little bit of going over them and looking at everything, make sure they're gonna make it through the fall season. Vacuum out grain bins. This is uh, one of the ones we're gonna be storing seed production in this fall. So we gotta vacuum them out because we don't want any other soybeans in here except for the ones that we're growing for seed for Pioneer. So one bin down, I got three to go. Doubt I get them all today. Takes a while to clean out bin like that. Over in Indiana today, um, we're going to be storing more Pioneer seed beans in that one and this one. So get them vacuumed out, ready to go. Way over there, I don't know if you can see or not, that's our main Indian bin location. Just using this for seed beans because they're separate. Don't have to worry about getting any other grain into them through a leg or nothing, so it's handy for that. Just a little slower loading's all. It's starting to look more golden. Yeah, that's where I switch over 1587 from 1197. A lot greener. Of course, 115 day compared to 111 day, it should be. All right, got this little place ready to go. Cleaned out and all the maintenance, greasers, checking all the oil and all the gearbox, all that. So we're only gonna use those two bins for seed beans. Those three will not be used unless I guess the crop's just amazingly bigger than we think. We've been having trouble storing enough the last few years, but that new uh, new 210,000 bushel bin, that uh, it really helps that problem out a bunch. Making another stand for the readout for the scales. It's gonna be at David's house where the new bin is. Working on that. Should've got a picture cutting it out with the plasma, but I miss doing that. Uh, it's a little rusty. Gonna have to have some brushing done. So we're gonna knock the rust off this old brake drum here that's fairly heavy. 
and use that for the base to hold up this readout. The readout's very light, but you've got to have a base so it don't blow over in the wind. It sits there good. And this will work good, but it's kind of dirty. The paint's not going to stick to that. So we get her cleaned up. Okay, it's not clean, but it's better. Paint will stick to it now. And that's what we're after. We just don't want an old rusty mess sitting out there. So we got that part and the top part. We got to do a angle iron across the bolt hose and a vertical box iron to hold everything. I should have River doing this. He's taking a welding class. Bolt it together and we'll get this thing out and paint it. Should tell you, my son in law Sean is uh, a welder for a living. It's, that's what he does. He's a welder, certified welder. And River, his son, my grandson, is going to school to learn to weld. He's going to be a welder too, I guess. And me, I just kind of dab at it. I'm not a fast welder. But I'm not real slow. I'm just kind of half fast. So I'm a half fast welder. Like our neighbors in Indiana, Newtons have started quite a bit picked. Done, but done for the day. But on the way home, we're gonna stop at a cornfield to get get our ears gathered up from our precision planning emergent flagging kit. I'm gonna rip all the ears off here and to take them in and total them up. Uh, we had 26 ears come up day one. Four day two, one day three, one day four. Uh, definitely had a good stand. Evidently our precision uh, planning, high speed, all the stuff. We got, it's doing a really good job. We had about all of them come up on day one, day two, then it's two stragglers, which is a pretty good percentage. So getting ready to hand shell them, take some moisture and weigh them all. reader uh, hand shelled all 32 ears took a weight off all 32 ears all 32 ears uh, took the moisture off of every two ears because that's how much it took to get up for a reading uh, so I got all that done it's getting late I'm gonna go home and enjoy the evening and I'll uh, I'll do the math in the morning all right welcome back and the results are in um, I got, I figured here in my handy little sheet that they give you what each ear would have made if every year was like that exact year for the whole, uh, for the whole acre at 32,000 population, which is what we had. Uh, but I did our little algebraic equation here to get our shrink down to 15%. So this is all what it would make at 15%. So these are real yields. And our totals ended up being Day one averaged 244.13. Day two averaged 235.05, so just a little drop off. Day three was just one year and uh, it was 238. So those are all pretty similar. Uh, day one definitely being the best though. Day four is where it really dropped off. I only had one year, but it averaged 126.3, so. That little section there that we measured the emergence on, that average was 239. So day one was above the average and the rest were below. Day three and day two, just a little bit below the average of the of the little piece of field we did there and day four way below. So 
Planner's doing a good job and even emergence, very important. Okay, we're loaded up, ready to go. And Jay's gonna go up, up to the Rollings Farm and extend a culvert to the north end of the big field so we can get in the culvert, get in the field better with the semi. Can't even get in it on that end. So we're gonna do that this morning. To make his baby wider. Looks a little wet. <laughs> Very thankful for backhoes and trackos. Well, we're getting her filled in now. Oh yeah. Gotta get a lot of cover on her. It's gonna get a lot of use. Heavy trucks, putting it. Well, we're loading her up. Gonna have to break some pack up here to smooth things up a little bit and give it a little bit better barrier, but that's where she is. Got the 4020 out today, getting her ready uh, her, with her yearly oil change, grease in, check and air filter, all that good stuff. Uh, getting her ready for its, let's see, what would it be? 57th year, I believe, of service here. So, yep. I say that was a good investment by grandpa on that tractor. It's Thursday and guess what? Today is the day. Not go time, but it's soft start time. The field for the first time. We're 22. Go pick some corn, pick at least 65 acres today. It's the odd test. See how it yields. Maybe we're going after that for the rest of the day. Just have to see how it goes. First day is always the hardest. Well, not the hardest. It's hard to get going. The last day may be the hardest. Dad's at the field. Took a moisture reading at 24, so it's go time. The day that we work all year for. Just like Christmas morning, only better. Got my swift cam all working through my iPad like always so I can see behind me. Um, probably should address the moisture. It seems to be a uh, first two seasons anyway. That's always been a common question. Why we start when it's so wet? Uh, 24 25 is about perfect. We think you don't have to worry about head shell. It doesn't head shell is bad, you know, it doesn't come out of the air when it's in the uh, corn head. It actually makes most of it makes it into the combine. And plus, since we got we have less corn acres than usual this year, we only got 5,000. So, but still, with 112 row head, you gotta start a little wet so it's not too dry at the end. So, that's why, uh, that's why we start when we do. There he is waiting on me. Just finished loading truck number two on the day. So far, so good. Did a lot of calibrations, different stuff. 
make sure my weights are right. I'm waiting for Jay to come back with make sure that his load weight was close to when I got there and his moisture. I'm throwing 23. Just going off what Dad said, I'm probably a hair dry. It's probably more like 24, 24 and a half. Truck drivers go slow down. You're moving yeah. too fast for us. So we got yeah. right in with these guys. See what's going on in there. there we go. Three lows. Too too much, guys. You're too good. <laughs> All right, David's up top. I'm down low. I'm gonna run it. So it starts back legging. It's pulling too many amps. Like in this range, it gets above this, we, we can have problems. It's a good indicator that it's uh, being overloaded. It's either not picking it up fast enough or not getting rid of it fast enough. So, process of figuring that out. He's up top. There it is. It's all I can see that high. Turn the pit off, don't let the leg run out. There's a blockage where it comes out of the leg going to the distributor. It's just a pipe and that distributor then sends it all those different pipes, gives it a place to go. Well, I think we got her fixed. The hump is something in the downspout where the leg empties out into the distributor where it goes to the other downspout. So, simple fix, that's why I hope you do it. I'm really enjoying this setup with the Pro 1200 screen. I got my uh, climate field view on the iPad up there, checking out everything Dad's doing, watching the yields, moisture, and all that. And here I got split screen between my uh, auto steer when I'm running next to him, and then uh, my scale page there. See, I can just, if I want any of them to take over the whole screen, it's just one button. I have to go back and search. Just, I don't know. I like it. Handy. Like this monitor. River on mower patrol.
done. We don't have the fish away yet, but just going off of the uh, climate, it tied a field record. So we'll see if it actually broke or not. So, but anyway, it's in the ballpark, so happy about that. Good start to Harvest 22. Well, first day of the harvest, and we're getting in our first test. We got some uh, same hybrid 1464 ML uh, Pioneer, which has been a good one for a number of years now. Um, we got it against itself. Something's got the starter on it with humic acid and uh, at five gallons, and then some of it has nothing. So, but the best corn win. Heading in. Dryer's full, or almost full. Good, man. Good first day. Very good day. Good. Very good day. Great first day. Very good day. Guess that's how the pros get it off, huh? Yep. That's how you get a little jump off. Yeah, that's next level there. Huh? I'm not standing there this year. <laughs> Right here this morning, looks like dryer's still running. That's always a good sign. Hasn't stopped. We got two wet hoppers. We always have one. We put in a second one. I don't know, it's been a while ago now. That's really made a difference. We come in, they dump here at the pit. It goes up, it goes directly into the hopper. It dries it. Then loads out here, goes to a bin somewhere for storage, and the trash goes out to a truck. When that's full, which it is, then it spills over to this hopper. And it automatically runs from there to there when, uh, when the hopper gets empty. When they both get full, then they spill into that one. So then it kicks out of that one to fill it. So that gets empty, then that gets empty. If you time it right, it all gets empty about the morning. Before he gets started, but that will always work out. See how close we are to the empty. Humper, our dryer must need more corn. So this drag just kicked on. We'll try and empty this. What's in there is the wet corn from yesterday that's not dried yet. We got a little measurer here. We'll just measure. Show you the screen. Going in the hopper, it's about 25, uh, 25.2 degrees. Or sorry, 25.2 percent moisture at 89 degrees. And it's coming out 16.3 percent moisture, so we can store it, it won't rot. That's at 71 degrees. Hopper off, not only dries it, also has fans that cools it off as it goes. And okay, got that in. That's about 30 percent full. So dryer's not gonna quit running before we start. Slow going when you start. We got wet corn, takes a while to dry, so you can't go full blast. But we'll pick till we get the hopper full, I imagine, today. Or the dryer full, both hoppers full. You should know what I mean by now. Back to the field. What do you want to see something pretty? So you stand over here to me? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Better help you sleep at night. Okay. County is on it today. Roads look good. Yeah. For ditches, I guess. Ditches look good. Oh, that took the sign down. Yeah, that'd be good.
looking horse the neighbors got. Bill and Jay, uh, the results of our first starter test is in. It was uh, strips of five strips of nothing on it against the red mix in between the rest of the field that has uh, has humic and starter on it. Uh, 525 five, five gallons total. Um, so there were 60 feet in between. It's good and fair, and no difference on test one. More tests to come. Been a great day. Things are going smooth. I don't even think the combine stopped. Just pumping her out. The combine's working well. New 9250. But something did just happen. It didn't take long. It happened on day two. Got, got some yellow top over there. Just happened. Well, the hopper's full. So, usually we quit, but we only got like uh, 17 acres left. So they're gonna park the trucks up there. We're gonna fill up the trucks. Let's see, I got one, two of them full. I think we got three more available to us between that and the auger wagon. Surely, surely we'll uh, be able to get this field done. Just kind of hate leaving a field empty or not done all weekend because we're gonna take this weekend off, I think, and then after that, Monday, it's go time. Well, the last empty truck we got. She's the show girl, old Blue Pete. We are out of room. We're gonna fill this truck and then, um, then we'll fill the auger wagon and then maybe another truck will be able to be dried by then. Maybe not though, so. It might fit on the auger wagon. I don't know, I kinda doubt it. Be close. Looks like it's gonna fit barely david's getting a semi-empty so i'll be able to fill him up and then i'll be enough weight off that i'll be able to drive back to the farm tonight so we'll have to leave it here for the weekend or come back here saturday and fill up the truck out but we we'll at the farm all five trucks are loaded up there we're done for the weekend last weekend off jay yep good first two days last zero breakdowns yeah I guess. Probably so. I'd say so. Well, it's a range of bunch or something. Yeah, that could happen. Don't don't talk like that. What? Don't talk like that. That's all I know how to talk. <laughs> you know any other language? You're not talking like that. What? <laughs> Foul language? Well, we got a rain. Right the start all our language. <laughs> 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 Anyways, that's it for this week. I want your Irish Merce, irish-farms.myshopify.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you sometime next week.